Hey, welcome to D-Lab Electronics Circuits for the System. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a multi-section filter capacitor in six simple steps. And it will save you big money over the cost of replacements by doing it yourself. Here we go. To demonstrate this process, I've elected to use a Drake R4B ham radio receiver. It is in need of a new filter capacitor. Now these capacitors are available online, but you'll pay about $45 for this guy. The cap that I'm going to show you can be built for $10. Remember, these capacitors are fully configurable depending on your application, whether it's a vintage AM tube radio, ham receiver, or a tube amplifier, whatever your application requires. So let me show you the six steps. So as I stated, these multi-section capacitors can be configured to whatever your application is. It does not have to be for this receiver. It has to do with the values of the multi-section cap that you're trying to replace. In this case, the R4B has 300 microfarad at 200 volt sections and one 20 microfarad at 200 volts. So we need to build a four section cap. So step one is to make your base for your new multi-section filter cap. Now what I have here is an 8-pin octal socket. These are inexpensive. They're made by a company. I can't really pronounce it, but it's spelled C-E-L-A-N-E-X. You can buy these on eBay for about $2 a piece. Don't use high-quality tube sockets for this, guys, because we're actually going to drill out these holes and convert this into a base for a multi-section filter cap. So step one, you need to drill out these tube socket holes. I use a 1 32nd drill. I simply insert it into the hole and drill her out. And they'll drill really easy. This is very soft plastic. Another reason that I do not recommend that you use these for their intended purpose, which is mounting a tube because the quality is just not there and they'll fail quickly, but they're great for this application. Step two is to install your ground jumpers on the base. So you see this little 20 gauge wire I have that's going between pins two and three, wraps around and goes to pin seven. That is for this application. I'm gonna throw the diagram up real quick. So I'm actually wiring this for the base of the R4B filter capacitor your jumper locations may vary. Step three, you're going to take your radio mount caps and slide those through the holes that you made in the base. Take your wiring, fold it through the lower hole and solder those because these upper holes will be for the wiring inside of the radio. Since this is a four section cap, I also put the little 22 microfarad guy in the base. Now you want to solder all those capacitor leads to the lower holes on the tube socket pins. So as I stated, the upper holes would be used for the connection inside the radio. All right, step four, you have a couple different options. You see our caps are all mounted and soldered, but they still want to move around a bit, and you really don't want that going on inside your receiver. So I like to use this large heat shrink tubing, which actually has adhesive in it. Okay, so you can either heat shrink, you can wrap it with electrical tape, or you can use an adhesive to hold the caps in place. Now we move on to step five, which is a little bit more labor intensive because it is time to remove your old filter capacitor. Before you do that, I highly recommend that you either take some pictures or make a sketch of the wiring underneath so that when you connect up your new cap, it's correct. After you remove the old filter capacitor, there's going to be a hole in this chassis. It's normally one inch for this style filter cap, and that happens to be the same size as the base of this tube socket. So the next step will be you need to put this guy in place and it has two mounting tabs. You're going to have to drill those two holes in the chassis 
to mount the new assembly. Just be very careful that you don't strike any wiring underneath. Step six is to wire the base of your new filter cap into your radio or amplifier as it was originally configured. Well, here's the bottom view of the new multi-section filter cap installed and wired up. Remember guys that this new base does not have a ground case like the old can type did so you do have to install a ground runner to the chassis. Let's take a look at the top. So out with the old multi-section filter cap in with the new D-Lab custom cap mounted with two 4-40 screws. So if you're in need of a filter cap for the Drake R4B or the Drake 2B, I have these capacitors on hand. So there you have it, an option for the high cost of filter capacitor replacement. And this one will last just as long as the original did.